Hey everybody, in today's video I want to talk about a great Cedar Walton tune called Bolivia. This, like many of Cedar Walton's tunes, can be a bit tricky at first glance. I'm going to break down some different ways to look at these chords that can hopefully open up some ideas for you when you're trying to approach improvisation over this tune. Also, sorry for not uploading in a bit. Again, my life is pretty busy with uh, being a full-time doctorate student as well as running an online private studio. So I'll be posting videos when I can. All right, let's jump right into it. All right, so because of YouTube's really strict copyright, we're not gonna cover the melody in this video. We're just gonna look at the chords and how to improvise over them. Though I'll say this, when playing any tune, always keep the melody in the back of your mind at all times. Especially in this tune where the melody is pretty much very singable, uh, it's gonna help you keep track of the form. So the first chord progression sounds like this. Basically, we're starting an E flat major and then just doing a 5-1 to the key of D. So you can either choose to engage that 5-1 to to D or just play the two key centers, E flat and D. Here's an example of playing the two key centers, just playing E flat major and then playing D flat major over the A7 and the D. Now here's an example of engaging the five to one, the A7 going to D major seven. When you're learning jazz language, make sure to categorize the different language ideas and licks that you steal from various transcriptions. So if you need some five to one ideas, boom, there you go, you have them. Or if you need some tonic major ideas, then boom, you have those as well. All right, so the next chord progression sounds like this. This is just simply a tritone sub of five to one in the key of G. So instead of playing D7 to G, we're gonna play A flat seven to G. When soloing over this, you can either engage the actual chord progression. You can play A flat seven going to G major seven, you can just ignore that and treat it as a normal 5-1 and it's still going to sound just fine. But for more information on tritone subs such as this one, make sure to check out my video on this exact topic. All right, so next we have this longer chord progression. Now this can be thought of in a lot of different ways. The easiest way, I think, is to play B minor ideas over most of this chord progression. So obviously over B minor seven, we're gonna play B minor ideas. Then over the C Lydian chord, we're actually just gonna play B minor seven pentatonic ideas as those two sounds work together very well. Then it's back to B minor seven again after that. And again, so we're just gonna play B minor seven ideas. Then we have B minor seven over A which is just a B minor seven chord with the flat seven in the bass. So again, it's the exact same sound. Now over the A flat minor seven flat five, we're gonna play our B melodic minor. This is a common way to play over half diminished chords as this scale has a lot of chord extensions in it, but it's also easy to think about because you just have to go up to the flat third of our half diminished chord and play melodic minor off that. So now you see that almost all the chords in this progression were playing B minor sounds over. So it makes it a lot easier to think about, at least in my opinion. All right, so after that, we have these chord progressions. Mm -hmm. 
So this is a bunch of pretty much two fives and five ones, and also some tritone subs. So first we have a two five going to F major. And then we have a tritone sub going to B flat major. But you can also think about this as a short two five, again, just like the two five going to F. And then finally we have a five one going to D minor seven. Here are some short 2-5 lines and some minor 2-5 lines that you can use over the chords in this progression. Now in this song, you usually start out with a vamp in G7, and then you end with that same G7 vamp. The last chord in this tune before our G7 vamp is an A7, and to me it's a little bit hard to play over A7 to G7, right? But think about this. So if our G7 was the five chord in a two, five, one, what would the two chord of that two, five, one be? So G7 would be the five chord in the key of C. And if that's the case, then the two chord would be D minor seven in our two, five, one progression. So why is this useful to know? Because the two chord and the five chord are the exact same sound. Now that you know this, you can play D minor ideas over the G7, and you can play G7 ideas over D minor 7. And now if that's the case, we can just think of the A7 to G7 as just A7 going to D minor, 5 to 1. And we have a lot more ideas to cover that type of sound. So basically this tune is just 5-1 lines and static minor sounds. Not really so bad after all, right? I would encourage you to think about jazz language in this way moving forward, you know, categorizing different language ideas as either static minor sounds or two five ones or five ones. If you think about uh, music in this sort of way as different sounds, as puzzle pieces that you can put in different spaces, it's gonna make improvisation a whole lot easier instead of trying to reinvent the wheel each time you solo. So to close this lesson, I wanna play one chorus of Bolivia and try to apply all the things that we talked about in this lesson. Thank you guys so much for watching this video about how to solo over Cedar Walton's tune, Bolivia. If you want any other tunes that you find difficult or any other Cedar Walton's tunes, make sure to let me know in the comment section below. Also, just an announcement, my album Each Step is up for Grammy consideration. So if you have the power to vote, I would love your support with this record. And again, thanks so much for watching. And remember to always keep swinging. <laughs>